and just breaks them. That's how you're supposed to do pop. You don't have to do that. Hey, maniacs. Hey, Midsummer Mania. Yeah. Midsummer Maniacs <laughs> is a comedy recap podcast dedicated to the mystery TV show Midsummer Murders. Each week we dig into an episode of the show, including the murders, the mayhem, the loonies, and everything else we love. This week, Midsummer Murders, episode three, season 24, Claws Out. I'm Mark. We've been forgetting to introduce ourselves. I'm Sarah. Claws out. This so, is another. It's the pet episode. Village <laughs> that has like a theme of stuff going on. If you let your children. That should cause anybody to move away. If you let your children practice feline seduction. <laughs> They should not be listening to the podcast. No, because they've got other problems that you wow. should probably... You shouldn't be listening. The you wor- should be dealing with that child who the is words. seducing fema- felines. <laughs> the phrase feline... De- oh. Seduction. The, the phrase feline seduction should not be uttered anywhere ever. You know, I looked it up. That's what they call it in the UK. Okay. They're wrong. Cat seduction. <laughs> that's what they call it. Before we dive in, though. Boy, there's a lot of good TV on right now. Yep. We've been watching some stuff this week that we thought we would just give you a little heads up about. See if it's something you're interested in. Maybe you should check it out. We finished Fargo season five. Fargo is yes. not for everybody. It's weird. It's got some heavy points in it. I, I'd really like to think. But I really liked it. I really liked it also. And I'd love to know what Europeans think of that. Mm. Because it is a very peculiar lens of America. Yeah, yeah. Kind of feeds into some stereotypes about, well, that's what Americans are like. <laughs> them Midwest Americans with all their guns and stuff. Well, it was. We're not all like that, I it, promise. It was fantastic. The last episode uh, just came on last week and. We enjoyed it immensely. Yeah, so it was fun. We also checked out the first episode of Monsieur Spade. Yes, so this is Sam Spade in France in the 60s. With Clive Owen. Yes. And I'll say, you got to stick with it. The and, first episode, yeah. they feel like we don't really have to explain anything or who anybody is. You'll just psychically figure it out. And I'm I, about halfway through, I'm like, I don't know. There's a lot but of time jumping. But then it got jumping. a lot. It got a lot better. There's a lot of time jumping that you have to pay attention to. Yeah. And the second thing is, like when you read Dashiell Hammett's Sam Spade books, there's one book which is the Maltese Falcon and several short stories. And when you're reading any Dashiell Hammett, which I read a bunch of in college, no, just after college, you have that moment of this is awfully purpley, right? Yeah, it's corny. His prose is kind of corny, but then you get into it and you're like, okay. You get used to it. You get used to it. And his di- uh, Clive Owen's dialogue is a bit purpley to begin with, but you, it grows on you. My recommendation is stick with it for the full episode. Yep. If you make it, you'll make it to the end if you stick with it, and you'll be glad you did when you get to the end of the episode. Then you're like, then I was hooked. Like, yeah, but last if I had ten turned minutes it, is super good. Yeah, if I had turned it off in the middle of the episode, I would have been like, Meh. plus, if you're this kind of person, you'd see Clive Owen's butt. We also watched the first episode of the new season of True Detective, which that has Jodie Foster in it. Okay, so it's True it's, Detective is another one. It's a little weird. Yep, a little dark, but it's it's really good. But this is set in Alaska mm-hmm. during the period of time when the sun doesn't come up Mm -hmm. so you never know what time it is never and it's always dark and it's always weird Mm -hmm. i'm like it's it's the long dark which is the video game that i play that is a weird video game but as a television show and i i enjoyed it immensely i like dark snowy things you're so canadian i know but I, I liked it. I'm eager yeah. to see what happens. It's Again, very, it's, it's intriguing. It is it is oh, off the beaten path. Yeah. And it's another one that if you make it to the end of the first episode, you're hooked. Yeah, I would I would agree. There's a lot of world building going on in a first episode in a show like that. They managed to put True Detective and kind of the first 15 minutes of the thing yeah. together. <laughs> yeah. 
another uh, show that's all in the dark. Yeah. In, Snow, in the cold. In the snow. Yeah. Uh, completely different. We started watching season four of Miss Scarlet and the Duke. Uh, I saw somebody online said they summed up this entire season with, if these two don't end up in bed by the end, I'm out. It's kind of that point. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, kiss her or be done. But I thought this week's episode with the Undertakers was very good. I did too. Yep. I like it. Yep. And we started watching the most recent season of All Creatures Great and Small. Which is... It's just feel it's a, good. It's a palate cleanser. Yes. With animal bits. <laughs> if you can get over the occasional animal surgery. Yeah, it's maybe not a dinner show. No, <laughs> don't watch it while you're eating dinner. <laughs> But otherwise, it's a really feel-good show. But but it's like the Larkins with a little more gravitas. Yeah, because there's a war going on and everything, but you don't see it. Um, it's elsewhere at this point. In yes, time, and I but. try I try not to constantly compare myself to the older brother. <laughs> like, oh my god, you're I, nothing like I'm that Tristan. person. I'm no I'm, Tristan's the younger brother. I'm. I'm, I've turned into that person. No, he's an old grump. Stomps grumble. around looking for my tobacco. You're not like that. <laughs> okay, so Monsieur Spade, Fargo, True Detective, Miss Scarlet and the Duke, all creatures great and small, all recommendations all great that TV. you should check out and, uh, if they're up your alley. Thank you for tuning in uh, to listen to us talk about this episode because there's lots for you to watch and listen to all out there, and we appreciate all of you taking the time. Thank you so much for listening. Absolutely. We love you all. So the original air date of this was the 18th of December, which is a month ago, uh, 2023. Oh, before you go on with that, yeah. yeah. spoiler. Yes. We're going to spoil it. Yes. It's a brand new episode, season 24, episode three. If you haven't seen it, stop right now. We're going to ruin it. We're going to say who the killer is. Killers. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Go listen to the mini, watch the episode, then come back. Because yes. we put out a mini episode for this back in December. And we're once again, if you're in England, we're sorry. Yeah, we're going to spoil it. And I'm I'm sorry if you haven't been able to see it yet. But it's, wait, wait. it's so tough. I get people all the time from all over the world message me on social media saying, when are we going to get this in their area? And I wish we knew. I wish... I wish you all could have it today. Yeah. And I wish there was a reliable source where we could actually find out when it was going to air everywhere because we'd tell you. Yeah. But we they don't They don't tell us tell anything. You. We no. ask. They don't tell us. No. And it's not like we're not Acorn. <laughs> no, we're not. We're not affiliated with Acorn or ITV. So. Yeah. Yeah. So this just came out. This yes. is a brand new episode. Directed by Paul Gibson. Written by Helen Jenkins. In the mini episode, we had 10... Watch Like a Maniac questions, yep. things for you to look for. So as we talk about the episode, we will point out the answers to those questions. Some of them may be controversial. Yes, I would agree. We've got some familiar faces. Oh, um, boy. Josette Simmon, who plays Madeline Saunders in this, um, one of the killers. She was also in season nine, episode eight of Midsummer, last year's model. Yes. Charlie Kondo, who plays Perry Fleming, the other killer, was also in an episode of Midsummer, season eight, episode four, Bantling Boy. And last but not least, Duncan Preston, who plays William Fleming, the neighbor, was in season two, episode three, Dead Men's Eleven. Oh. So we've got a few people returning Some to Midsummer. Some familiar faces. Yes. Well, there's only six actors in England, so somebody's got to return. Well, and two thirds of the returning actors are killers. And in this Selena one. Cadell shows up out of nowhere, <laughs> dies, <laughs> doesn't be a dead body, and then leaves. <laughs> Apparently, we were quite funny last episode. <laughs> um, this is, uh, it's rare for there to be two killers in the Midsummer. I think this episode is less bonkers and more well written. I think it's actually a well written story. I'm not going to say the last episode wasn't well written. Yeah. This is a well written episode, too, and that is slightly less bonkers. It's but slightly, still very Midsummer. Last episode was bonkers. Bonkers. <laughs> Yeah. All right. We start right off the bat with something bonkers, a heat-seeking drone. Yes. This uh, <laughs> heat-seeking drone. <laughs> Drones don't looking, do well in midsummer. No. <laughs> looking for- They drop a, knives on people and everything dog. else. Yeah. So- um, But did, it's got heat vision. I, I'm going to talk about something here. <laughs> That's what we do on podcasts. Okay. I'm yes. going to talk about a character <laughs> who I constantly refer to as third wheel. Mm. Okay. Reese- 
is a mixed up child. So Reese is William Fleming's grandson, Perry's son. He has the heart of Madeline's son, Edison. Yes. In his chest yes. transplant. And he's the one stealing dogs. Yes. He's also in the parties searching for dogs. Yes. He is horrific. <laughs> He is driven insane by being a third wheel. He has some mixed motives. Every time they mention the trip to Canada, I I just see him in the corner going, uh, I'd like to go to Canada. Can I too. go to Canada Can too? I go to Canada too. Yeah, so, he's part of the rescue party along with Frank Bailey, who is the pet detective. Yes. And his wife, Kim. You mean Ace Ventura? No. Sorry. No. He's Last pet detective reference. He's anything but Ace yes. Ventura. Okay. So they find the dog, mm. but they give out coordinates. Yeah. on the Especially on the drone footage, you see coordinates at the top of the screen. Yes. So someone on uh, the Reddit this week said, hey, this show has Easter eggs in it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to which I said, boy, do we have a podcast for you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even bother to write them down yeah. when we're watching the episode because I know you're all over it. <laughs> so the coordinates are 51 degrees, 31 minutes north, 51 and zero degrees, 51 minutes west. Where is that? That is located. Uh, let's see. It is north. West, well, almost completely west of uh, London. It's about 75 to 100 miles west of London near a place called Rebecca's Well. Mm -hmm. So if you search for Rebecca's Well, you find it. But it's near a road. And I saw the name of this road, and I'm like, we need to speak about this road. <laughs> What's the road called? Crazy's Hill. <laughs> now... It's not Crazy's Possessive Hill. It's like multiple crazies. It's C-R-A-Z-I-E-S. So it's plural crazies. Plural crazies <laughs> hill. If you or someone you know live near Crazy's Hill, please let us know. <laughs> I would relish putting that on my address. Oh, can we <laughs> please petition Bloomington to change the name of our road? <laughs> to Crazy's Hill. We live on a hill. It could be Crazy's Hill. Easy. Is that not the best name place ever? And so much easier to spell than our street name. Yes. I'm not going to say what it is in case people decide to stalk us. So like nobody would do that. But it, yeah, it, it crazies. Is, it is a field. That's awesome. It is a field. It is near uh, where the other map shows. It's really near. So they picked coordinates that were approximately right. Yeah. it's That's it, good. It's near Wargrave and Lower Ship Lake. Okay. As opposed to Ship Lake, which is further down the river Thames. So this is, this is all absolutely <laughs> midsummer, and it's near Henley. There's a ton of filming that gets done for the show in Henley on Thames. Well, if so. I was a dog and I was going to go run away and get stuck in a culvert, I would definitely head for Crazy's Hill. <laughs> Crazy's Hill. That's where you start. Yeah, you know, you got to go up near Rebecca's well on Crazy Hill. <laughs> <laughs> Turn left where you see the culvert that has a dog trapped in it. Then take a right at the heat-seeking drone Never and mind. you'll find it. They couldn't see in that culvert. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, now you're getting all technical. You don't think a heat-seeking drone can see through concrete or aluminum or whatever it is? No. I did also notice there was an elevator there. Do you know what an elevator is? Like a grain elevator? No. I don't know. It's the uh, it's a hay elevator. What it oh, is? Oh yeah, is it's a, like a crane. It's like a giant a, ramp that yeah. you put up to the top hayloft. part of the hayloft. And you load it, and you it's like a big conveyor belt that carries the hay bales up. Yes, and yeah. it's run by the tractor. Yeah. I've had to climb up them. They are not safe <laughs> 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 to get into the barn to then spend hours moving hay off of them. I hate the I know. You had to climb it? You couldn't just ride up? Okay. 
all it has is like a chain with little teeth on it. Oh, okay. That pulls the bales out. Oh, okay. I thought it had like a belt on it. No, that you it's could not sit a, on. It's not a belt. So it's a metal chain. So if you let those uh, teeth dig into your ass, you could have let it carry you up there. But otherwise, yes. you have to climb. It's a metal chain <laughs> on a metal uh, crane arm, crane yeah, yeah. platform type thing in August. Oh. <laughs> it's a little hot and it's a little loud. I bet. And plus, so like you're going up into the haymow, and unless it's secure on the haymow opening, mm -hmm. it, it wobbles it around. It becomes a teeter totter. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so unless you actually secure it to the opening of the barn, yes, like with some like little L brackets some, or something, then no, no, you it just, just moves all over the you place. Just push it until it goes in the hole, and then you send your child up it. <laughs> And our kids complain. Come on. Voice of experience. They got nothing to complain about. So they find the dog. There's a rescue party. And, of course, they mention that there's a dinner that night at the Tandor Kitchen where Frank is going to get a hero award for all the dogs that he's, or cats, that he's found. I have two problems with the Tandor Kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, the first problem I have with the Tandor Kitchen is I'm not eating Tandorian food, and mm -hmm. I want some now. Yeah. So it made me very hungry. The second thing I have is, did you notice on the sign that it says, enjoy our dog-friendly garden? No. Okay. I didn't notice that. Included in their dog-friendly garden, if you recall, is a giant cage where they keep their dog. Mm-hmm. That is not a dog-friendly garden. <laughs> well, that's just where Storm stays when she's put up. I guess. What I don't like about the Tandoor Kitchen is the person who karate chops the papadoms. Did you see that? That's how you're supposed to do papadoms. The hand that comes down, hi -yah! Hi -yah! And just breaks them. That's how you're supposed to do papadoms. You don't have to do that. You can just take one and break it on oh, your plate. No, no. You do the karate chop. I have never seen anybody do that. I looked it up. People say that it's done. I've never seen it. Oh, well, the next time we get Papa Don's, which should be tonight, but we have a do to go to. You're going to karate chop them? <sighs> maybe we could have Indian tomorrow night. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Sarah's needlessly trying to train Patty to do dog agility. All he wants to do is run away. Yeah, did you see smart. one of the things? So they have a platform that he's supposed to run up and a dog tunnel. Did you see what else they had but don't mention? Mm. One of those sets of poles that you're supposed to go through oh, yeah. back and forth. But but they don't have the poles. They don't so they have the other things. So they've used other things, including a pitchfork from a Satan costume. <laughs> You use what you got. You use what you got. Then we see a sign about a missing cat, and we are launched into our first Watch Like a Maniac question, in which we really don't have an answer. Well, there's a couple of things. So the question is, what village does this take place in? Yes. And this is controversial now. Yes. Because there's three it could be. <laughs> The flyer for the dog agility contest and fundraiser for bowel cancer says clearly it, says it's going to happen on the village green of Binwell. Yes. Okay. However, these are all day appropriate dates, by the way, for 2023. I checked them all. Nerd. <laughs> However, podcast <laughs> on the missing cat poster, it says Greater Canis. Yep. And later, when we see the arbitration paperwork, for William Fleming and Frank about their five foot deviation in their fence, it says Greater Canes. Yeah. So we don't really know we where we are. We don't know where we are. I think they tried to be clever with the name of the town and calling it Great Canis, like dog, like Canis. Like canine? Yes. And the producer went, no, it's been well. <laughs> We see a village sign for Benwell at one point. Yeah, we see a village sign. Maybe they're really close together. So I don't know. I Maybe that. Greater Canes is the haughty taught part of village because William and Frank share a fantastic Tudor revival house that is gorgeous compared to the little semi-detached that Madeline lives in. He was supposed to get a whole bunch of money for selling his tech company. Mm -hmm. Well, why, and they live on the river, why too. Do, why do they not have a detachable house? A detachable house? A detached, they do. It's a trailer in a the backyard. A detached house. <laughs> I think even half of that house would probably cost you many millions of dollars. It but, fronts right onto the river. But they don't have a longboat. 
Yes, they do. No, the next door neighbor. Frank them. doesn't. Frank doesn't. So, Frank- can I just say that I think Frank is a bad pet detective? Okay. Because a- we get this montage of all of the missing <laughs> posters of the cats, the dogs, the gerbils, the parrots, the ferrets, everybody's pets are being stolen. Okay. Lorna is a cat seducer and Reese sells purebreds on the, the dark web. <laughs> All of the red ribbons should go right to those two people. And Frank hasn't figured it out. And I have a problem with Frank's character. Frank cheated on his first wife, did homophobic slurs. I did, I missed that the first time mm-hmm. on his employees. Yep. And basically forced people out and bullied them. Mm-hmm. In the first five minutes of this episode, and this is a show that is good at this. Good about it, yeah. Okay. We don't get Frank bad enough. No. All he does is make a kind of offhand remark, which... About a dead brother. A dead brother that she freaks out about. Like, that's not enough. He should be shown as more of a horrible person. One of his neighbors is one of the thieves, and he doesn't know it. He's a bad pet detective. (laughs) He's a very bad pet detective with a beautiful house. So the missing pet... Montage that you mentioned before has some interesting names on it. Sleepy. Sleepy the cat. Storm. Yeah. Bin cat. Bin cat? Yes. Did you see bin cat? No. Yes. The cat's name is bin cat? Bin cat. That's like trash cat. B-I-N-K-A-T. Bin cat. (laughs) It's like bin man. And Lola. Lola. That's not a bad name. So uh, let's do this here. Pet names. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> this is a... Okay, we can agree that Bin Cat is a bad pet name. It's, though, ki- it's kind of funny. Though it might be like an East Indian name. Or maybe they rescued the cat from a trash can. Could be. It's better than trashy. <laughs> and we're not making fun of... <laughs> <laughs> of hey you, garbage come uh, here of you or your naming of your pet we're sure you are all brilliant people who have wonderful names for your pets if we happen to mention as a bad name one of the names that you've named your pet you probably did it for a good reason and we have a, a dog named olive mm-hmm. co-sponsor of this episode <laughs> and f- we uh, the dog we had before was Fanny, to which everybody in England yeah. goes. <laughs> <laughs> they, they did third grade giggles, and our cat's name is Lucy, which is short for Lucifer. Yes. <laughs> If you don't know, Fanny in England is the... uh, Lady parts. Lady parts. (laughs) Here it's more of a tush. Yes. More of your butt is your Fanny. So what criteria can we come up with for not naming pets correctly? I have never thought that it's a good idea to name pets people names. Like Ted. Chris. Oh. (laughs) David. David the dog. That would be so... My, My friend Vince, they... His grandparents would always mix up his name and the dog's name. What was the dog's name? Toby, which was funny because we had another friend named Toby. But Toby's a really common dog name in England. Yeah, and it's not a bad person name. And I can understand. Now, if their dog's name was Spot and they called him Spot, that would be worse, right? They're both boy names, so it's okay. But yeah, people, common people names for, uh, I don't like that. I also don't. Mary, Sue. Uh, Edna. Ed, oh. <laughs> Irene, get in here. Or too many syllables like Elizabeth. You can't name a dog Elizabeth. I also don't think it's clever when people name their animal after some overly obvious physical characteristic. like Spot. Or like you've got a black and white cat and you name it Oreo or Domino or something. Be more creative than that. I also think but, you should mm. not name your cat. Uh, your do- your animal, any animal. Something you can't yell in public? Something you can't <laughs> yell in public. Ben Cat! <laughs> or a name that would confuse the animal, like go away. Uh, yeah. Come well, here, go away. <laughs> you obviously can't do that, but like, piss her! <laughs> Which may be a completely appropriate name for that animal. But... Or stay. That would be the worst dog name ever. <laughs> stay! Come here! Stay! <laughs> You're just talking about names to torture an animal. That's all. How to poorly train your animal. Oh, I don't know about sleepy. S- sleepy. Storm doesn't strike me as a perfect. Mm, Lola, I don't like. 
Lola's okay. It's okay. Well, how do we feel about Patty? Patty's a great name. I don't mind Patty at all. It's kind of a slur. <laughs> yeah, that's my problem with it. Does every house in this episode have a murder board in it or some sort of crime board? Most. Okay. Most of them do. There's- Frank's really bothers me. It's got three big labels on it. One says missing, one says found, and one says evidence. And they're just spaced around with a bunch of pictures with red ribbon, red yarn leading to various places on a map. They should all be pointing to two places, Lorna's and Reese's. That's it. That's all. So you can clearly see on his map Ashton Ferry Lane, which I found, which is north of Henley on Thames. Like this is all is crazy as hill like on his 10 feet away from each other. <laughs> Mount Crazy. I tell you what kind of geek I am. I'll tell you. I'm like, those are canal boats, not river boats. <laughs> that's that's nerdy. And yes, I realize a canal boat can go on a river, but from every canal boat blogger that I watch, they really don't like being on rivers. And I would say a river boat is probably too deep to be in a canal. Yeah. They need to be shallow. You could call them both long boats, though, if you wanted to be really nerdy. So they do two transitions in this episode that are really nice. I wish they only did one of them. The dog tag, the yes. storm. The storm transition is From nice. the poster to the dog kennel. Yeah, which is nice. And then they do it again. I forget where it's in my notes, but they do a transition like that again. It's like the editor was like, oh, I can do that. <laughs> I learned a new trick. I can do it again. <laughs> So Madeline Sanders owns the dog training facility, which I assume is in Benwell, where they're going to have yes. the agility contest. And she has a daughter. Danielle. Daniela. Is it Daniela? Yes. Sorry. Daniela, who has the worst taste in jeans I've ever seen. But what else does she love? Which is another one of our watch like a maniac. Well, when she's hanging out in her room with her boyfriend and third wheel, dreaming about (laughs) their trip to Canada that they're not taking third wheel on, she has a poster on the wall that says unicorns are real. Yes. So the answer to the question, what does does she love other than horrible jeans and drugs, apparently? Is unicorns. Is unicorns. Yeah, I wish she... I don't like the drug part of this episode because it's not, in the end, it's not needed. No. And it's needlessly like. It's big city. It's true crime. <laughs> you know, like. Maybe, why can't they be selling bird's eggs or something? If it was something like Adderall or something, I could see it. Yeah. But like she's a hard, like she's dealing hardcore drugs. Like she owes a debt to a drug dealer. Yeah. That, I, she's going to big lengths to go, mom, I'm bad. Yeah. Look how bad I am. I'm really bad. Yes. And deals drugs to like her friend's dad. I mean, it's just, but no, no, it's not her friend's dad. The husband of the, of her boss. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. yeah. Yeah. What? I, I think they missed a trick <laughs> here. Okay. So Madeline is an overbearing mother, to say the least. Yes. Very controlling. Okay. In response to the fact that her son died, Edison died, and so she wants Daniela to live up to all of her hopes and dreams. Now, wait a minute. This is Midsummer, so his previous death must be actually a murder that we have yet to solve. No. No, he just fell off a hill. That wasn't the trick I think they missed. The trick I think they missed is that he died because he was trying to take a selfie and tripped and fell off a cliff. Yes. So really, Madeline shouldn't let Daniela even have a phone. Yeah, I think so. Because she might fall off a cliff. She might fall off a cliff. (laughs) Or do something else while taking a selfie. If you're really over controlling, you'd be like, no phone. You might you might die taking a picture. Now I can imagine all Daniela's selfies are her trying to sniff cocaine off a mirror. <laughs> While standing on a ledge. <laughs> with the Look, two, Mom, with I'm the, bad. With a peace sign. Yep. The two fingers salute. <laughs> and third wheel in the background. Looking sad. Look, I got a scar on my hairy chest. Want to listen? He just the, wears a stethoscope around. His scars are pretty good. Yeah, it's good. And the scabs on Perry's, Perry's arm. arms are really good. Yeah, they're good. They're super good. I think they actually scratched him. And I think they actually gave the actor who plays Reese a scar. No, I don't. They cut him. They couldn't do that. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, Sarah, they couldn't do Applying that. Applying a prosthetic on a hairy chest is really oh. difficult to do. Wow. So they did a great job. All right. So Ashani and Aiden own the Tandor Kitchen. And they They're, have two, do- two children who really want a dog. Do and they? That is their entire <laughs> situation. Their reason for existing. Yes. I the whole episode I'm like do these kids even exist that they keep talking about our kids are so heartbroken they're heartbroken they're heartbroken where are they the, we hear we, we hear their daughter yeah. say something from another room yeah. to Aiden and then at the very end when the dog is returned suddenly they appear two but, children run through the through the shot and that's it but their house and the dog trainer's house are the epitome of put a dog on it yeah everywhere that you look is dog stuff. Oh, Madeline's got a picture of her dog above her fireplace instead of one of her children. And then Lorna's house is put a cat on it. Yes. <laughs> well, Lorna's got reasons to have a house like that. We haven't even gotten to Lorna yet. And then, so the, so the main people, right? You've got yeah. Frank and Kim and their nephew, Ty, who lives in their ne- neighbor's backyard, who is William Fleming, his son, Perry, and his son, Reese. Perry, who works at the gardening center that's named after the dead kid, Edison. Yes. Why? I don't... Uh, so, th- we talked about this earlier. We need a name for this. What was the name that I came up with? Oh, Strange Bedfellows. Oh, yeah. Where, Where you, you put everyone people together is completely who connected. Like, yeah. I'm your nephew, and I'm living in a trailer of your mortal enemy's uh, next door neighbor yeah house like why he's supposedly Who's, super rich why isn't he in that house yeah and i have the heart of that lady's son who died and my best friend moved here just to be with her daughter yeah it's all forced everybody is bell connected phone. in all these weird ways everyone's connected um i'm guessing that perry started the gardening center named it edison edison's after the boy who died because his son has his heart so it's I an guess. honor of him I guess. It's a nice tribute to a kid who saved your kid's life, I guess. I guess. The best thing about Lorna (laughs) is the picture of her that Frank takes when she's in her kitchen window threatening him with a knife. (laughs) Which is the proper resolution, as opposed to the picture she looks at online, which even though it was 10 years ago, is potato vision. She super zooms in on Frank at that corporate event picture, and he's just like some pixels. It, oh, I hate those pixels. I hated him why? so much. <laughs> why can't that be like a real photo? Like, it's only 10 years ago. It's not 110 years ago. It doesn't mean that people didn't email a bad resolution. <laughs> Fleur is fantastic in this episode. She is so funny. The first time we see her in the cop shop, she practically throws a file at some no-name cop who sits at the next desk. She flings it at him. He has to catch it. And we need to get this straight, okay? She is so mean to Winter because she completely loves him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, like, she's razzing him. There's been people online who are like, she's so mean to Winter. Okay, Winter is little brother. Yes. She is older sister. Yes. And this is the the how it's supposed to be. It wouldn't surprise me that in the next season, he doesn't razz her back a little bit more. Yes. Because when be- she's behind him and pretends that he's a puppy and then yeah. hikes her leg up on the trash can, <laughs> I just think it's so funny. In Cop Shop B. We're in Cop Shop B. In this that's episode. right. We are. That's what's new about the Cop Shop. What's different about it is that it's completely new. Yes. It's brand new. Nobody mentions it. Nobody acknowledges it. They're just in a completely new space. They have two maps that are the same. One's a satellite image of the same map that is on Frank's board also. Frank owed Fleming, his neighbor, $500 because of a fine that Frank was charged for encroaching on Fleming's space. Now, these are dated the 17th of May, 2023. And Frank but, pays the fine in pennies. In pennies. In a wheelbarrow. In a wheelbarrow. <laughs> you think he's not bad enough? He's bad. Well, there's lots of bad stuff that come out later. Yeah. What I'm saying is in the first five minutes that Frank is alive, he saves a dog, receives an award, and says a slight. 
And then he gets killed. He, he needs to be worse in the first five minutes. But we find out how bad he is after he's dead. Oh, yeah. And all these people already know how bad he is. We just don't know yet. It just... It's I, not one of those where you're like, that character is so annoying, I hope they're the one who gets killed. Do you know what the greatest movie of 1977 was? <laughs> no, and why are you bringing it up? It, it was Dog Poo Wars. <laughs> <laughs> It was what? Dog poo wars. Okay. Like Star Wars, but with dog poo. Oh, that was out of nowhere. No, they talk about that. (laughs) They talk about there was a great dog poo war. Fleming does say that that Frank trained his dog to poop in his yard. Yep. (laughs) He goes, he trained him to, uh, in my poop, in my yard. Yeah. And Mm. that, that is definitely not a birdie dirt. But the next episode, next week. Oh, <laughs> we have the oh big boy. controversy we about have the a F-bomb. Big, the F-bomb. I am a liar. I'm a drug addict. I'm a horrible person. I take selfies on mountaintops. <laughs> While standing on one foot. There's no reason that Ashani needs to be the first wife of Frank. No. There's really not. It, it's, it's not necessary. It's more strange bedfellows and just an excuse for her to look at pictures and have a knife. Yeah. And it's a cake cutting knife. It's not even sharp. You couldn't hurt anybody with that knife. Fleming's yard. Well, first of all, Fleming and Frank both live in amazingly beautiful houses. Yes. It's gorgeous. They do. Did you notice the picture behind Frank's murder board? The boat? Yeah. The ship? This gorgeous seascape. Put up a murder board right in front of it. Even the murder board is amazing. Yeah. It's like this big oak, like the the best movable classroom chalkboard kind of frame. We need one of those. It's gorgeous. Yes. Like, ugh. But, you know, they only show like one room of Frank's house and it's really the foyer. Yes. That's it. That's all they show. I don't know what else is in there, but that's Walk it. Walk into our office foyer. Okay. Go no further. Yeah. We have some thank you notes that proves that we've caught, we've found some dogs. We have two desks. But Fleming has a long boat, yes. a river boat, a canal boat. And there's a name on that boat. It's called the Anasazi. The Anasazi. Which was one of the things we asked about in our Watch Like a Maniac. It was, how is Fleming connected to basket weavers? Because the and Anasazi tribe are famous for their baskets. They... You have to, if you have a second, just Google Anasazi baskets. They're incredible. They're amazing. Yep. They made baskets that were so tightly woven, they could carry water in them. Wow. That's incredible. And I, so. We They're re- beautiful. We've referenced this before. I watch a lot of longboat content on YouTube. You do. I do. They, it seems to be not a trend to name your boat a stupid name like Americans name their boats. Yeah. Americans like punny names for yeah. boats. But Anasazi, that's a good name for a it's boat. It's classy. Yeah. And it's a beautiful boat. Too that- bad it's a dog prison. <laughs> <laughs> they they also though rent it out. Yeah. So you're the person who rented this boat out. You come to this super classy house and they're like, the boat is out back. Come, we'll show it to you. It's a beautiful boat. You get in, it's just covered in panicked dog hair. <laughs> it has to be. Cause Reese keeps putting the dogs that he steals in there to keep them. You know what they're gonna do? They're gonna freak out, panic, bark like maniacs, pee everywhere, and shoot shedding hair off of yep. themselves. He he must be good at cleaning. I, I don't know, because there's just no way. Lorna let, is the cat seductress that we've talked about, right? She's everything about cats because she's a broken person. She, okay. She used to be a professor of digital encryption. She yep. helped Frank found this company that was really technologically advanced. Yep. Her husband is gone. So people she, think because <laughs> she gets mail for Professor Lorna McIntosh, she gets mail for Professor McIntosh. They think they she think, had a husband. They think she has. Ah, a, she never had. Got a husband. you. I must. I missed that the first no. time. Um, that's sexist. Yeah. Well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she didn't feed her husband to the cats. Oh, darn. The sex is like a 1977 James Bond movie. <laughs> Which you've been watching lately. But she's fabulous. I like her so much, even though she's so broken. 
And she, th- her house has put a cat on it. Yes. Right? She's so got, she's, she's even got kitty barats in her hair. She has kitty And she barats. has kitty mugs. She has yeah. kitty mugs. <laughs> she has no encryption stuff anywhere. No, she's not into that anymore. And then she has a Mac, which a real programmer doesn't use, but I'm just saying. Well, it did lead to one of our watch like a maniac. Yes. Because she's Lorna Macintosh. On a Mac. Using a Mac. Yeah. She's an apple on an apple because Macintosh is a kind of apple. Yes. They're very good apples. They are. She's emotionally broken, kind of agoraphobic, sort of. Yeah. Not very friendly to other people. She's not mean. And she's... She Run just wants to money. be left alone. She's running out of money. Well, you would. She doesn't work. And yep. Frank owes her yep. and isn't ever going to give her what he owes her. It's second episode in a row where older ladies have bills on their table. If you were going to seduce a cat, <laughs> okay. how, how would you do it? <laughs> With witty banter. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> would you like a cat Mapolitan? <laughs> I was thinking that. Like, if I was Lorna and I wanted to lure all the cats to my yard. Yeah. <laughs> other than milkshakes. Put out milkshakes. I think I would have, like, some lasers in the backyard. <laughs> like a little laser light show. <laughs> cats can't resist lasers. Yeah, or, like, balls of string. Or, like, I would top my fence with breakable, breakable stuff that could just be knocked off of it. Cats can't resist that. They would no. climb up there and just knock it off. And then you could grab them and bring them inside and be like, you're my kitty well, the, now. F- the front... The, the cats choose the people. That's right. You don't choose a cat. <laughs> Lots of comfy beds and cardboard boxes in the yard. Cats love those things. Uh-oh. The garden center man has consumption. <laughs> no, it's just hay fever with blood. <laughs> Maybe he's part of the drug dealing. So they go to the church yard. With Father Hinton? Father Hinton and the motorbikes in the graveyard? <laughs> before that, <laughs> before that, Frank's ex-wife... Frank's ex-wife and his wife go Shawnee and Kim. And they actually have a nice scene where Shawnee wants her dog back. Yeah. But they go to the cemetery, okay? The cemetery has a note board. Why does- All of the animals are missing, Mark. You have to put the posters up anywhere you can and even, everywhere. Even over the poster that you're putting it up on. Yes. Okay. Did you notice any of the other signs on the notice board? <laughs> no, I didn't pay any attention, Mark, because I knew that you would. Well, they have this a is new a theme. name for church in this town, whatever the name of this town is. They have a new name for church because they have a sign that says, join us for our Sunday book club. Is that not church? <laughs> <laughs> That's one book club. It says 2 to 3 p.m. And then it has the best word ever. Free. <laughs> it's free to be in the book club? It's free to be in the book club, which is church anyway. Church is a giant book club. I, mean, I know I'm making fun, but that's what it is. You go to church to talk about a book. I just think if I wandered into this village, whether it's Greater Canes or Benwell or Ben Cat or whatever, <laughs> if I wander in and the first thing I see is that every flat surface is absolutely covered with missing animal posters i'm leaving well what it is is the beginning of the lost boys with all the lost (laughs) children do you think the milk cartons here have animals on the vampires stealing cats now have you seen me my name is whiskers (laughs) that person looks strange yes they do (laughs) okay now I have a problem with this. She says, Lorna says she looked out her window and saw somebody strange taking pictures of her. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then she threatened them with a knife. Mm -hmm. Would she not recognize Frank as not in his helmet? Yeah, the helmet on. Yeah. And then why would she keep the paper that she ripped up of the lost cat sign? Why would she keep it? Why would she crumple it up and put it on the windowsill? Yeah. Because she got distracted by a crazy person in the yard with a motorcycle helmet on. I'm Father Hinton. I have a name, but no lines. (laughs) No. (laughs) You'll refer to me in the third person. Yes. So Ty is going to get half of Frank's estate. Which is going to make the trip to Canada completely different. So now the house that's already split in half is going to have to be split into the half is going to be quarters because Ty is going to get half of the half. I realize. (laughs) Maybe he'll get everything but the foyer. I realize that Frank's wife 
Kim. Kim is under stress. Yes. Okay. And I realized that Frank was a bad dude. Yes. But she makes out like a bandit. She does. In this episode. She even gets the pet detective agency. She gets the pet detective agency. Puts her own name on the door. But she also has an absolute, absolute point when she says, Frank said to me that he was going to help his nephew out and it ends up that he gives him 50 percent of the estate would you not be livid that's a little bit more than helping out yeah like wow that's more than i would expect if that's what you told me and then you died and i found out that that person got half she has every reason to be upset she probably killed him yes no no so they receive a ransom note at 1609 Mm-hmm. On the 26th of July mm-hmm. from Sleeper Train mm-hmm. <laughs> at Electron Mail. I use Proton Mail. Neutron Mail. You use Neutron Mail? So Lorna's email address is Sleeper Train? Well, no, because it's it's all encrypted. So it's, it's not that. Because you know her email's Cat Lady. Yeah. Crazy Cat Lady. Crazy Cat Lady. Or Crypto Cat. Oh! <laughs> That's her new name. <laughs> what form of cryptocurrency do you think she's going to demand? Oh, it's got to be Doge. It's got to be Doge. Because Doge is it. If you don't know, it's a little dog. It's a little dog. <laughs> um, it's got to be Doge. But you uh, you skipped an important scene jump in there, though. Oh, what did I miss? Well, two things. One, Winter completely betrays his entire age group by taking a photo of Barnaby's <laughs> phone with his phone. <laughs> But I think we're right. I think it would take longer to explain to Barnaby how to send it to him. (laughs) Maybe. The other thing that you skipped is the drug deal in Aiden's car. Yes. Where Daniela goes running in her awful pink jeans to hop in the car and get money from Aiden. And Aiden opens his glove box. And we see the music that Aiden's listening to. Which is one of our Watch Like a Maniacs. It's a best of the 80s CD in his glove compartment. Absolutely. That CD has Wham! on it. You know it does. Human League. That CD has Human League. Culture Club. Maybe Queen is on that Mm, CD. Maybe. maybe. Yeah, it depends if they get the licensing. Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Frankie Goes to Hollywood's on there. Adamant. Adamant. It's got to have one Got some Adamant on You know it, baby. So yeah, so he's uh he's paying Daniela for some drugs. Yeah, again, that the tone of the whole drug thing is weird. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> well, and and let's be fair here. Dan so Reese says that he's been stealing dogs and selling them to breeders to get money to help Daniela pay off a drug debt because she had a big bunch of drugs to sell. And Madeline found them and flushed them. So so Daniela couldn't sell them and pay back the dealer, right? So she owes the dealer a bunch of money. Yep. But I guess this dealer... Which is like a 1980s surf punk song. Totally. But I guess this dealer is pretty forgiving because he or she gives her more supply to sell or and, she wouldn't have anything to sell to Aiden. And it's just like, get the money back to me eventually. You know, whenever. One dog at a time. It's yeah. fine. Then... So, Ty gets killed with a shock collar. Yes. So there's two parts to this. We have to deal with the murder itself, and we have to do with the Barnaby's house. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to do first? Crime scene. Okay. So we're doing the crime scene. So Aiden wakes up with somebody in his trailer. Have you never? Sorry, Ty Ty wakes up with someone in his trailer. Have you never been in a trailer in your entire life? Every footstep. The moment they stepped in the trailer, he would know. Yeah, unless he's a really, really deep sleeper. Never mind the fact that that is the most like bad electronics guy on the internet connected. <laughs> they say that the collar gets plugged into the mains instead of yeah. the battery. And I'm like, does a trailer have mains? Like, I guess if they run a, a extension, thing, cord, extension out cord out to it, but like the wires look like he took his fingers between his and twisted them together. And then twisted them together. Like, well, he's not trying to make something safety conscious here, but it is a murder weapon. I'll give you that. He might not have woken up when, because it's Perry, when yeah. Perry comes into the trailer, if Perry was light on his feet yeah. and ties a deep sleeper. But I'm sorry. I would definitely wake up when you put a collar around my neck. There's no because, way because you're reaching he's underneath. he's closing the collar. So he's, he's already got it around, around his Around, underneath neck. his neck. How did he do that? <laughs> 
And have you ever tried to adjust the sizing of a collar? When when we have to get Olive a new collar, it takes like a half an hour to get it the right size for her neck. And then it's it's like last week, putting them in the hole and taking them out yeah, and putting them in the hole again. <laughs> and a shock collar, it has little contacts on the inside that have to be in contact with your neck or it won't work. So it has to fit. Yeah. It can't be loose. And he can't cough. He can't do his consumption thing. No, right? no. It's, he can't have a hay fever attack. But we're missing the important part about the murder, what? which is Ty has somebody watching over him. Yes. Ty has the weirdest knickknack trailer, trailer decorations ever. When Fleur is looking have, at the body. And we, have, we have two put a dog on at houses. Yes. And we have one put a cat on at house. Yes. And this is put a ferret on it. Uh, or uh, I think they're dogs. Military ferret dogs. <laughs> Which is now the name of the episode. When Fleur is inspecting the body and Winter and Barnaby are standing over her, behind them, you see... Way in the background. No, they're like three feet away. It's yeah. a trailer. They yeah. can't be too far. But they're like up on little shelves on either side of their heads. Yep. There are two dog ferrets dressed in military uniform. Like There's they're a like pilot ceramic one and there's... A soldier one. A soldier one. Meanwhile, outside. By the way, we we'll put a we have a picture of yes. these. We'll put it in the show notes. If you have these, please send us big pictures. Pictures. If you know if they're dogs or ferrets, yes, let us know. Please let us know. Meanwhile, outside, everything is numbered. The crime scene investigators have gone whole hog. I mean, they've numbered every blade of grass. Yes. Every chair has a number. Yes. Every cooler has a number. Yes. And so does a red record player sitting on the table it is number nine this is yep and that the, was one of our questions this is the season of record players yeah we have two out of four episodes we have at least two episodes with record players and, and multiple ones in yeah. the last episode yeah and number 12 is the cooler the cooler that's on the ground yes the, the like retro cooler yes the yellow one I love how they completely go, well, or somebody has set a keys or tied and locked the door. Like they give a, a good explanation. And that reminds me, Winter here gives an exceptionally good explanation mm -hmm. of why Daniela could be the killer. Yeah. It makes complete sense. Yep. It fits with everything. Yep. And Barnaby goes, no, it's not weird enough for mids. <laughs> <laughs> But she's his girlfriend. Nah. Uh, nah. 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 I get really tired of the scenes with Daniela and Madeline arguing. Okay. Before that, we have to finish part two of that night, which is the Barnaby's house. Oh, okay. So what happens in the start of that scene in the Barnaby house? Barnaby is sitting at the table, supposedly eating dinner. Mm. And Sarah and Betty. Fleur come oh, Fleur. in. Fleur, yeah. They're drunk. In. They're drunk. Yeah. Now- did you see what's on the table? No. I, this man has a weird situation because he has a charcuterie board that he's he's sitting there reading some document. Eating charcuterie? Eating charcuterie while his wife and her friend are out. Well, that's nice because stereotypically he'd be eating like beanie weenies out of I'm, a can. I'm glad so. he takes care of himself. But there are or four <laughs> types of cheese on his Or that Sarah left him a very nice charcuterie board for dinner. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe four kinds of cheese. Well, she and Fleur much. are totally out drinking too because much. Fleur is absolutely drunk when she comes in. Too much for one man. Nah, more cheese is always better. We're overdraft. 495 pounds with a limit of 4,000 pounds. Well, you got a limit of 4,000 pounds. Keep Over buying drugs. Overdraft is a foreign concept to us. Yeah. U.S. banks don't have overdrafts. No. You have... A savings account. Yes. That is also your money that you can dip into if you if you go over in your checking, they might take you out of your savings. Or you have a loan that you go and apply for that is separate. There's no like, well, if you overspend your checking account, you just owe us a little bit. That just does not happen here. Yeah. Madeline and Daniela's arguments get really old really fast. I'm gonna go to Canada. Really? Because that Canada guidebook, I could not find anywhere. But of course, I'm searching for a book called Canada with a QR code on the back and red lettering. It's By a, the way, it's difficult to find. It's a little difficult to find. 
And why is she going to go to Canada now? Ty's dead. She's going to go on her own. I I guess. Her and her pink jeans and unicorns are going to go to Canada to not be a medical student and deal drugs there. I guess. Pot's legal in Canada. You're not going to make any money. (laughs) That's the biggest problem with her, uh, with her plan. We find out that Perry and Lorna tried to sue Frank. Yes. For the business with the business. And And they find that out from some person who emails them from the newspaper. Yeah. Like they couldn't just check the archives and read that. They had to get it from a reporter at the Gazette. But they go to confront Perry at the garden center. Yes. Which has cars. (laughs) I think they're planters. Maybe. That you can buy and put a flower in, maybe. So they're having a discussion they're in a greenhouse. Yeah, walking those, down either side of a the, big um, table that has plants on it. And we're not paying attention to any of this. No. Because between them are three to five blue little cute cars. Yes, that I think are planters. They are either Volkswagen bugs which or is, Citroens. Which, which, so our watch like a mania question was what bugs are in the garden? What insect has taken over the garden center? Yes. Because we were sure they were VW bugs at first, but now I think they're probably citrons. But we could also say then which fruit has taken over the garden (laughs) center because citron is French for lemon. There you go. Lemons have taken over? Yes. That's dumb. Did they not know what lemon meant when applied to a car? I think it's the other way around. Oh, so citrons were so bad that lemon became a name for a bad car? I think mostly they were French. And so people in North America were like, Ew, They just French. assumed they were bad. <laughs> the face you're making is almost as good as the face that Fleur makes when Barnaby confronts her about getting off dating apps. Yeah. <laughs> We find out that Aiden has been fired and is pretending to go to work, yeah. which uh, I'm, I'm just not, I'm not into that story. I just I think it's like you're trying to give Aiden a, a motive to kill Frank because Frank knew that he was pretending to go to work it and that just, he had a drug problem. I just, I don't really care and, about it. And to me, it minimizes his drug addiction. Yeah, he it trivializes goes, it. Some days I do and some days I don't. That's not addiction. You're keeping it in a tin in your closet and buying it from a teenager in town. I think he is addicted. Yeah. He's playing it off. Yeah. Again, Winters goes, Daniela is the simplest explanation. Again, she's a drug dealer in town and yeah. had some problems with everybody who's died so far. Well, she wasn't mad at Ty. But she could sneak in there without him getting upset. So now we have Kim Bailey, Kim Bailey, pet detective. Why is the room smoky? It's to make it mysterious. Why is the room mysterious? It's a pet detective agency. They're hard-boiled detectives looking for (laughs) Sleepy and Lola. Okay. Kim's serious about this. Aiden also (laughs) gives up everything instantly. (laughs) Of course he does. And his wife is like, don't touch me. Yeah. (laughs) As she should be. They get the dog back and they're like, oh, yay. Look, our kids are visible again, too. And he's like, yeah, babe. And she's like, don't touch me. Storms off. She's still mad at him. So Fleur finds the dog napping kit because somebody tried to steal Patty. Mm -hmm. Aiden, Reese tried to steal Patty. Rule one of being a bad dude is don't leave your ID in your bad dude kit. Well, when bow-legged Fleur is coming at you through the woods, uh, I would drop everything and run. But still, it was (laughs) like... She's going to catch you. Yeah. (laughs) Drop the dog, drop the backpack, go. (laughs) And they find the key ring with the cork on it. It's got a floater. They go find the dog that just runs out of the boat. The boat that is entirely trashed now that a giant Czechoslovakian wolfhound has been in it for like months. He's had the dog for a while. Long enough for them to put up posters multiple times. This is the world's worst dog natcher I have in my notes. Yes. But then Lorna gets killed. You think it's kind of wrapping up. You're like, okay, things are kind of tying together. And Frank and Ty are connected. But then Lorna the cat lady gets killed. She gets strangled by a dog snare. This is an improbable. Through the window. Improbable death. I think that would be really hard to do. To loop that thing around her head. Yeah. uh, The snare poles exist. Yes. They 
they are not usually fatal. Um, and I have in my notes that the, these uh, Fleur says these cats are all over the forensic field. I'm like, that house has to smell <laughs> bad. And Lorna's hand is in the automatic cat feeder. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, if, if it had been a day later when they found her, they probably would have eaten her hand already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or gone out the window that's left open where Madeline yes. put the snare in. So they find out that what's his name had been there. Perry. The, they find out Perry's been there. So they go talk to Perry. Well, and Perry's blood is under Ty's fingernails. Yeah. Well, at, at first they think it's Reese's. Yeah. But then they realize, no, no, it's Perry's. And we have the saddest scene of the episode where he's filling out cards. He's, he's writing Reese. birthday cards for Reese because he knows he's not going to be around. Yeah. Because he has terminal cancer. And he's going to the pogey. But not until he takes Madeline down with him. Yes. Which, right on. If he'd gone to prison without letting them know that she was part of it, that would have been really sad. So they go to the pub, and then they figure out that Madeline's involved, and they go and inv- find... The knife, and then they go confront Madeline, Madeline with Perry. And then they go back to the pub, and it's like been five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> They're still sitting there with the dog at the table. <laughs> and and then, Sarah's like, I ordered another round. She'd be sloshed by then. <laughs> I drank all, all of your drinks while me, you're me, gone. Yeah, Patty. <laughs> Take all of the drinks. Flora went and got a parrot and came back. <laughs> <laughs> she's so tired from chasing patty she's got all of her workouts in she so is. perry perry killed frank on accident yes perry's because, target was ty the whole time yeah but some guy on a motorcycle with a black helmet could be ty could be perry um it could be frank perry just stabs whoever that is in the throat with a knife stabby stab stab i got the cancer consumption like make sure it's him like he would know that frank wears leathers too why is frank going outside he's leaving his own party to go spy on lorna no no there's no he picks good... up his backpack his helmet everything why he's leaving. is he leaving the party i don't know I don't know. Especially so that he can get killed. Good Indian food. <laughs> well, most and of it's on his wife's dress. And so. Karate chopped Papa Dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, ah! Okay, so then Perry kills Ty because that's who he wanted to kill him. Yeah, second time's a charm. But then they have to kill Lorna because Lorna figures it out. Yeah, so Madeline has to kill Lorna. That is the most improbable death because someone would see her. Yeah. Like, is it a collapsible snare pole? Can she put it in her pocket? No. She's walking down the road with this great big pole with a loop on it. Yeah. And then I don't care that she's a dog trainer. There's no reason for her to be carrying that. There's also the fact that Perry didn't know who he killed at the restaurant. But then when he finds out that he killed Frank, he kind of goes, oh, I hated him anyway. I guess I'll try again. Oh, well. (laughs) Terminal cancer, you know, might make you really sad, but he doesn't seem like he's a callous person. He goes, you told me it would be painless. Okay, but the knifing to the throat? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And what part of being electrocuted by your neck sounds painless? Like that that doesn't remotely sound painless. And then the best part is Third Wheel and Daniela show up at the end and they essentially go, Mom, you're a murderer? Dad, you're a murderer? Is everyone's parent a murderer? (laughs) They should. Let's go to Canada together. Okay. Worst parenting session ever. (laughs) My dad's going to prison. My mom's going to prison. Let's be friends. Oh, look. Fleur got a bird. You nitwit. (laughs) I like that she got a bird. I don't think she'll keep the bird. I don't like the drug stuff, but I like the motivational stuff. Yeah, it makes, I understand Perry is dying. He knows it. And his son is only alive because Madeline's son died and he has his heart transplant. 
I absolutely believe that Perry could feel like he owes Madeline yeah. something. But Madeline- and he's dying, so he doesn't have anything to lose. But I can't, the part I can't connect is her saying, I want you to kill my daughter's boyfriend because I think he's a bad influence. When she could have had a conversation with Ty. Yeah. Which we only see and meet Ty very briefly. He seems fine. He seems like a fine guy. Yeah. He moved there to be with Daniela. And he's not he involved clearly in really the drug cares stuff about at all. No. He has a job. But Madeline. And a place to live that's protected by the ferret dog. <laughs> but see, Madeline thinks he he's likes the records. drug dealer. Yes, I know. But only because she doesn't believe her own so daughter. So have a five minute conversation with them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think that Perry would say, okay, I'll kill him for you. Yeah. That's, it's. It, I think she, I think he would say, I'll have a talk with him yeah. and scare him off. Maybe. Yeah. I could see Perry doing that. But not. Sure, I'll slit his throat outside a busy restaurant where they're having a party. No never, problem. Never mind. Perry would be going, no, I don't think he's a drug dealer. Mm -mm. He lives in my backyard. I think I would notice that. Yeah, I think your daughter's the drug dealer. Strange actually. bedfellows again. That's the, that's the only part of it I don't buy. Yeah. Is that that willingness of him to do that because well, he doesn't seem like, like a bad well, person. Well, I got to kill Lorna too. <laughs> yes. Again, if she wasn't caught... Who would be next? Like, I like Perry's rage to her. Yes. That's the best part of that at yeah. the end. Because he's so like, too. you took advantage of me. Yeah, and he's right. He is. He's he, he doesn't say he didn't do anything wrong. No. But he says she manipulated him and took advantage of him. Yep. Absolutely. And Madeline is not sorry. No. She's justifying herself to the end. Oh, Mom, her poor you, daughter is going to need so much therapy. So much therapy. So, okay. So after if Madeline the, had had therapy when Edison died, none of this would have happened. Yes. If Lorna had had therapy after her abusive work situation, she would have been better yeah. off. Daniela is certainly going to need therapy now. Even just talking to friends. Reese is going to need some help. Yep. Okay. So after the, after the credits, mm -hmm. once again, I want to state that Kim makes, makes out, out like, like a, a bandit. bandit. Yep. <laughs> She gets the whole house now, the pet detective agency. Yep. She doesn't have a bad husband anymore. Nope. She 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 loses a dress. Mm -hmm. That's the extent of what happens to her. Yep. Because she doesn't seem all that upset that Frank's dead. No, because he cheated on his first wife to be with her and then cheated on her with his first wife. And she's another one who she says completely legitimate possibilities of the crime to Barnaby. And Barnaby's like... No, it's not weird enough for Midsummer. Kim's big problem, what makes her unlikable, is that she's too glamorous for Midsummer. Yeah. It makes I would her say. uppity. Yeah, I'd say that. But she doesn't drink. She doesn't. No. She's not. But she wears drunk. big sunglasses. She, so, you yeah. Know. You think Ashani and Aiden, Aiden are going to make up? No. I think Aiden's on the, the road. On the way out. The, on the road. He's on Crazy's Hill out of town. He'll get partial custody of their invisible children. Yeah. They're mostly invisible children. And the dog. Reese, maybe Reese gets in the boat and just goes before they can arrest him for dog napping. No, he's down. At, he's been booked already. That's true. Remember. But William's got money. He'll yeah. get him out of that. Yeah. Mm. We've barely talked about William. <laughs> Just a tiny little part of the it. The one thing you need to know about William is that he's played by Duncan Preston. Yes. Who was in a movie that I am not making up, okay? It's not even a horrible movie, but Mark's seen it because I know you haven't seen it, but I am not making up this movie, okay? Are you ready? It is called Nativity 3, Dude, Where's My Donkey? <laughs> What is Nativity 2? Nativity 2 is Danger in the Manger. <laughs> He's not in that one. <laughs> These movies exist. Wow. They were funded. People wow. were excited about this new project they were embarking on. Nativity 3. Is there a 4? I don't know. Oh. Frankly, I don't want to know. Is there a Wikipedia page for the Nativity movie saga? Oh, yes. Oh, ho, ho. and IMDb pages. I will put links in. Who is the, the show best notes. corpse? Uh, okay. We have Frank. Frank dead in a dog kennel. Ty. Did you notice there's like 30 balls in the dog kennel? Yes. Does Scout eat that much? Storm. Storm, sorry. Storm's a big dog. I guess. 
Frank's dead in the dog kennel in his leathers. Ty, dead in his bed with the shock collar on. Or Lorna, dead on her floor, choked by the dog snare I'm with her hand give, in the cat food. I'm going to give best corpse to Lorna's hand in the cat food. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I'm going with Put Lorna. Put some cat food on it. If mostly be just because I like her. And God, I like that, Josie Lawrence who played her. God, that house must stink. <laughs> You're obsessed with it. There are cat pans everywhere. Yeah. Which might mean that it doesn't smell because she's fastidious about it. But, but still. Maybe it does. And that is Claws Out. Season 24, episode three. Next, we have the last season 24 episode. Which is? Is sad. The Thanks climate so of death. Climate of death. Ooh, it's environmental. <laughs> Eco warrior dad. And influencers. Yes. Yep. That's next week. Yes. All right. Until then, bye, maniacs. Bye, maniacs. Thanks for joining us on the Mystery Maniacs podcast. If you enjoyed our crazy podcast today, don't miss out on future episodes. Follow us on social media for updates, behind-the-scenes content, and exclusive sneak peeks. Subscribe, like, and share to spread the word. Bye, maniacs. Your, your chair is making a noise. Sorry.